the fight or flight response, and what happens during amygdala hijack. Can you remember the last time you were nervous or angry? Perhaps you felt red-faced or that your pulse was racing. What you were feeling was a psychological threat state known as the fight or flight response. Whether it was a physical, social or emotional threat, the physiological symptoms and the psychological response would have been similar. Physiologically, when feeling in a threat state, it is common to experience an increased heart rate, shortness of breath, faintness, a dry mouth, sweating and hot flushes, an upset stomach, and tense or trembling muscles. These changes in our bodies, created by the fight or flight response, can help us when we face a physical threat, as they are preparing the body to do exactly that, to face and combat the risk, or to run away as fast as possible. The challenge is that we also experience these same symptoms in social situations, and in those cases the changes in the body and mind can be detrimental. For example, they can have a negative impact on cognition. The fight or flight response can reduce our ability to think clearly, concentrate and make logical decisions. So why does this fight or flight response kick in and what can we do about it? Our neurobiology dictates our responses to external stimuli. In other words, our brains are wired to react in certain ways in certain circumstances. If we perceive a situation to be rewarding, we will act in one way. If we find it threatening, we will respond in another. The fight and flight reaction is primarily there to help us survive physical threats. This human behaviour is similar to many animal species responses and is triggered within the amygdala, one of the oldest parts of the brain in evolutionary terms. This is where the term amygdala hijack comes in, as it is where one part of the brain overrides the functions of other parts of the brain as it pumps stress hormones into the body. Amygdala hijack happens when the amygdala interprets something as threatening and then sends a signal to the hypothalamus, the brain's command centre. The hypothalamus then stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, which activates the adrenal glands, pumping epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, into the bloodstream. This adrenaline prompts physical effects such as expanded airways, an increased pulse and heightened blood pressure. Senses such as sight and hearing are sharpened and sweat glands are opened. The epinephrine also starts a release of glucose and other nutrients into the bloodstream. These changes impact other parts of the brain. The frontal lobes, and in particular the prefrontal cortex, sometimes referred to as the PFC, is the area of the brain that deals with reasoning, decision-making, planning, and evaluating emotions. In threat state, these areas can be temporarily crippled. The amygdala overrides the frontal lobes if it perceives something as a significant threat. When this happens, our mental responses become more primal and less rational. All these things prepare the body for physical action, to stand and fight or to run away, without the need for unnecessary thought and distraction. This can be useful if you are stepping into a boxing ring or about to compete in a race, but slightly problematic if you are in a social situation such as a meeting, or standing up to give a presentation. So what can we do? The best and simplest way to manage these physical symptoms is by taking some deep breaths. This will allow the initial flush of hormones to pass and for our rational minds to clear. If you would like any further help with this or any other subject, then do click on the related links or head over to the website at www.therightquestions.co.